All right, so in this lecture, we are going to learn how to use EFS. And for this, we first have to go and create a security group. So we'll go to the security group side. We'll create one and I'll call it my EFS demo. And it's just a security group for EFS, just so we can understand exactly how security groups work for EFS. So for now, inbound, I will have no rules and outbound, I will have all the rules as well. So it's so just a default security group. Here we go. So now my EFS uh, demo right here is, is being created. Next, I'm going to go to services, type in EFS and open up the EFS file system. As we can see, this is a file storage to use for our EC2 instances, just like I told you. Huh? <laughs> Next, we create the file system and we have three steps. The first one is to configure it. The second one is optional settings and the third one is to review and create. So we're going to create this in our default VPC. And as I told you, EFS is accessible across three AZ. So we have EUS 1A, 1B and 1C, all ticked, and they're all going to be created within their own subnets. They will get assigned an automatic IP address. And then I have to assign a security group. Now we're going to remove all the default security group and I'll just tap in the EFS demo security group. So I'll has assign this EFS demo security group to the three subnets. And here we go, we're done. So this is basically saying that our Elastic file system has a security group attached to it. And this is how we could control which instances can talk to it or not. Now let's go next steps. We could add tags if we wanted to. So I'll just call it EFS demo as a name. That sounds good. Here we can choose the performance mode. So as I told you, there is general purpose or max IO, but max IO is when you have thousands or hundreds of EC2 instances. So we'll just use GP for now. The throughput mode, we can choose bursting or provisions. We'll just use bursting, it's the simplest one, but provision will be, we have to specify how many megabytes per second we want. And so for the exam, just know that bursting is enough. And enable encryption is if we wanted to enable the encryption at rest, in which we would choose a KMS master key, for example, AWS slash LX tail file system to encrypt our data at rest. For now, I'll just disable it. It'll make everything more simple. Click on next step and we review everything. It all looks good and click on create file system. Now this can go and take a little bit of time to happen because this will actually provision a file system, assign it IP for you. So now the system is created, but as you can see in the bottom, the mount target state is in creating stage. You can also see that for now, we're going to get a file system ID that we'll use later on in this course. We get a metered size, so we get actually the number of the, the size of all the files we put on our file system and the number of mount targets, so how many AZs it's on. So this looks good. Now we get to have to wait, but in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and create an EC2 management console. So let's go to my EC2 instances and I'm going to launch instances. I'm going to launch an Amazon Linux 2 and I'm going to say, okay, it's a T2 micro. Then I'm going to configure instance details and I'll say this one, I want it to be in US, EU West 1A. Sounds good to me. Then I'll click on next add storage, next add tags, next configure security group. And I'll just create a new security group. I'll call it EC2 for EFS, just because I want to show you that we can have a security group dedicated to these EC2 instances. I'll allow SSH on port 22 so I can um, install stuff on it. Review and launch, then launch and say, I'll use my key pair AWS course. Launch instances. And I will basically launch a very similar instance. So I'll right click and launch more like this. And I'm going to edit basically the AZ I'm in. So in instance details, I'm going to edit the instance details and say, okay, what I want to do is now to launch in EU West 1B in my subnet EU West 1B. Sounds good. Click on next at storage, next at tags, security group. We're going to reuse that EC2 for EFS security group. So that's perfect. Uh, EC2 for EFS. Yeah, perfect. And click on review and launch and launch. I have the key pair and okay. So now what we get out of this is that we have two instances, um, two T2 micro running in EUS 1A, EUS 1B, and they're all going to have this EC2 for EFS security group, and we're going to configure EFS on both of them. So what I'm going to do is get the public IP and SSH into these instances. So here I can SSH in my first instance. Okay, here we go. And my second instance is right here. I'll also get the public IP and I will run the SSH command on this one. 
All right, so I'm in my two instances. They have different public IP, different private IP. They're in different availability zones. And now I have to configure EFS. So for this, we can go to Elastic File System and you can get basically mount instructions from a local VPC. So you can click on it. And here it shows you exactly how to set up your instances. So the first thing I have to do is to run sudo yum install and then the Amazon EFS utils. It's basically to help us mount the EFS. So I'll just do this and install it on both machines. So it's going to install it. Perfect. It's done. And then you have to mount your file system. So we'll create an EFS directory on our instance. So we'll go and create an EFS directory. I'll create actually a slash uh, 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 root at EFS. So slash EFS. So here we go. Sudo make dear. I'll do it here too. Sudo make dear slash EFS. So now if we go here, we can see that we have an EFS directory that has been created. And the next thing I have to do is to mount using the helper. So as you can see, we can use um, TLS mount option if you wanted to use encryption to talk to EFS. For now, we're fine. And so we'll use the, this command right here, sudo mount minus T EFS. And here is the file system ID. So we have to use that. So let's try it out. And we have to get the file system ID. So let's go back um, to EFS. Oh, but this is the right file system ID because we are in EFS. As you can see, it's gone from here. So let's go back to the mounting instructions. And we're going to run this command. And let's see what happens. So we are going to run it and make sure you add slash before the EFS. Press enter. And right now, not much is happening. So let's go back to our here. And as you can see, though, my mount target is available. But so the problem is, this looks like a timeout. And why is it timing out? Well, if you do remember, we have security groups attached, my EFS demo. And right now they don't allow any inbound connection. So we need to allow the security group to get inbound connections from our EC2 instance. So I'm going to go back to my security groups and I'm going to find my EFS demo and inbound rules. I'm going to add a rule and you can actually add any port really, but I'll just add the NFS port and I'll say the source is going to be the EC2 for EFS security group. And I'll say allow traffic from my EC2 instances, allow NFS traffic. So the idea is that now we're saying, okay, these instances who belong to that group will be able to talk to my EFS um, network file system on port 2049. So let's click on save. And now this role has been added and that should help out. So now let's wait and do a pseudo mount. And now it succeeded. So now the EFS file system is mounted. So I can copy uh, this entire command and paste it right here on the other one. And now it worked as well. And so our EFS file system has been mounted. Now, how do we verify that it worked? Well, how about we go to the EFS directory and here I'll use the pseudo user just to make things simple. So I'll go to the EFS directory and use the pseudo user. And here I'm just going to say, echo hello into a hello.txt file. So if I look at it, now I have a hello.txt file that contains the word hello. And this is an AZ US East 1A. And now let's look at this, we'll do LS. And we find the exact same hello world.txt file, even though this EC2 instance is an EU uh, West 1B. So I'll cat hello.txt and we find the exact same content. So the cool thing is that now, both these instances into two different AZ have access to the EFS, the volume drive, and they can just have the same files mounted on the same uh, the same um, endpoint. And so that's really, really cool because we have effectively mounted an NFS drive. And so the really cool thing you need to see here is that we had to troubleshoot a timeout connection using security groups. And that is something that can be asked of you at the exam. But overall, pretty easy to see how things work. I think it is quite natural. And I like the way that you can get your mount instructions directly from this little pop up. So Yes, that's it. You just you just need to know how to do these things, but it's pretty easy. And now you're an EFS expert. <laughs> that's it. All right, I will see you in the next lecture.